Now, this comes from Vice. Uh, Vice uh, had an article that basically talked about Ajit Pai might be getting fired, which is great because uh, fuck that guy. Uh, <laughs> I do not like Ajit Pai. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention this too, is if you guys leave comments pertaining to these stories, I'm going to read them at the very end uh, of the segment so I don't lose my train of thought. I get, I get a little scatterbrained every now and again, so I want to try to stay on point so that these videos don't end up being super fucking long. So, uh, but yeah, uh, Ajit Pai, uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of the guy. I, I have talked shit on Ajit Pai quite, quite a bit and, and, and rightfully so, I think, because, uh, boy, that guy's a disgrace to the Indian community, right? Like as an Indian person, as somebody that was born in India and moved here and has like gained his citizenship, I can, very, uh, very <laughs> confidently say, fuck that guy. He sucks. Uh, he is he is just a disgrace to the Indian community. There's not a lot of good Indian politicians in America. That that is a that is a problem that I have seen. Uh, you have Nikki Haley, you have Ajit Pai, Kamala Harris is is also half Indian, so I'm going to count her as part of the disgraceful Indian politicians in America. Uh, but then you have Shama Spant, uh, who kicks ass. She's a socialist uh, a city council member in Seattle that has uh, defeated Jeff Bezos multiple times. So if you want like good representation of Indian politicians in American politics, boom, Shama Savant. That's the way to go, people. That is the way to go. But why do I hate Ajit Pai? Uh, uh, he killed net neutrality. And he made <laughs> killing a July. I feel like that in and of itself should be enough to to be like, all right, this guy is a piece of shit, and like nobody really needs to support him anymore. But not only did he kill net neutrality, he then like made a weird, goofy fucking video where he's like, look at all the things, look at all the things we can do. Uh, you know, uh, uh, like he's the chairman of the FCC. He kills net neutrality. He goes on the internet and he's like, you can still be a Jedi. Here's a toy I bought. And he dresses up like the Sith, who are the bad guys. Depending on how you look at Star Wars, they're, they're traditionally the bad guys. <laughs> the Sith are. And, he may, and then <laughs> there's another thing I read, and I couldn't believe it until I like looked up the corresponding articles too, is... Uh, he he like hung out and made another video with a pizza gator <laughs> on the daily caller like i guess he uh, and i guess one of the people that's involved with the daily caller or something is uh is a pizza gator like they, they <laughs> like they were all about pizza gate which is just like dude <laughs> like if you really want to come off and be like yeah what I'm trying to say about net neutrality and why we need to take it down is a really serious thing. Don't dress up like the Sith and don't fraternize with conspiracy theorists. Like, I feel like that should be, that should be like a no brainer. But he made all these, like, he made all these claims that net neutrality was stifling the internet, right? And what? And so, if you if you don't know what net neutrality, net neutrality is, it basically means that everybody gets the same internet service, no matter where they are, no matter what their political affiliation is, and no matter what they're trying to do, right? Like they can't, you can't throttle somebody's internet speeds just because you don't like what they're saying, or just because they live in a particular part of the country that you know you that that ISPs consider very difficult to get to. So it really restricted ISPs from making a shit ton of money by throttling speeds and, and basically saying, oh, I'm going to, um, if you want, you know, faster internet, then you're going to have to get this new plan, this deluxe plan, and we're going to charge you an additional $85 a month or whatever, right? I'm, I'm just kind of making that, uh, making up that number. And Ajit Pai's uh, rationale for getting rid of net neutrality was that it stifles the internet. It doesn't let the internet be what it needs to be, which is completely false, right? It's like a total bullshit claim. Uh, what it really does is, is that it it stifled the greed of the internet service providers. It, it stifled the greed of companies like Comcast and Verizon. 
like two years ago, maybe two or three years ago, maybe, maybe even longer than that. I made a video basically talking about how, how these companies are trying to stop um, smaller internet service providers from expanding their business. Right. And, and part of what they would do is, is these smaller internet service providers um, that provided internet specifically to a city or, or maybe even to a region they would invest in things like fiber optics and you have to <coughs> run fiber optics cables, you know, through, uh, through underground channels. So it really becomes who owns the land and who, if you can get permits and all that kind of stuff. So Comcast and Verizon would l figure out where these people need to put their lines. And then right in the middle of where they would need to put their line, they would buy up like a, a, you know, a square kilometer, square mile of land. And it would be m way more money for them to dig around this one piece and come back. Right. And, and these are small ISPs. So they're, they're not like, you know, making billions and billions and billions of dollars. So that expense would be way too much for them to justify putting that line through. And this was a way that they were legally going about doing it. All they were doing is purchasing land. And then th that land would not get the permits to get that fiber optic line through. And this was totally fine, right? And this is already stuff that they can do with net neutrality in place to stifle other internet service providers that were providing better, faster, and more secure internet than someone like Verizon or Comcast. That's just, and, it, and so now like net neutrality was gone, I honestly thought, and I, and I brought this up on uh, Ron's show on Tuesday, is I honestly thought that Verizon and Comcast were going to go crazy <laughs> and like start charging people a bunch of money. Uh, but they didn't, which is cool, which is nice. Uh, but they also like didn't do anything to like help the situation, right? Like people um, are, are don't have jobs and they have all this other rent and bills to pay. And they were just like, you guys don't have to pay the internet. But, you know, maybe maybe you can just do like a, a smaller monthly payment. Maybe you'll be in debt for, for uh, with us forever. So, <laughs> like, they didn't really help the situation either. Really what, and, and Audrey Pai, by the way, too, was, was a Verizon, uh, I think he was a Verizon lobby lawyer. So he worked for Verizon specifically to, like, help Verizon become a bigger monopoly than it already is. That was that was his job before he, before he became FCC commissioner. So, what they're saying now is this guy is is going to be out of a job. Um, there's already controversy around uh, what is it, Section two thirty, which is going to try to let basically Trump control what free speech is, right? Instead of letting Twitter or Facebook dictate what it can and can't go on their uh, on their platform, which they shouldn't dictate free speech either um, unless uh, to, to me, it's one of those things is like, yeah, leave up the fucking conservative people and, and let them let them talk themselves into a corner. And as long as they're not preaching violence towards a group of people, that's fine. Right. Like that's that's where free speech laws really come into play is are you preaching violence towards a particular group of people? If you are, that's not protected under free speech. That's inciting violence. Um, you know, and, and even if you're preaching hate speech, yeah, maybe you should monitor that sort of stuff, right? Like there, there, there could be a social responsibility put on private companies like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff to monitor what really, what, what kind of hate speech goes on there, but they don't really do a whole lot, right? Like there is still a ton of hate speech that's on their platforms. Uh, but they come, they come after, um, they come after like, like lefty channels and right and far right channels too, that basically go against the establishment. That's who they really go after. Uh, and and right now, I wonder if there's going to be a lot of channels and a lot of videos that talk about Joe Biden, talk about Kamala Harris and their records that are going to get throttled. I know on my channel specifically, uh, anytime that I have talked about the candidates, it does it does start to get throttled. Like the video will do really well in the beginning, and then all of a sudden now I'll, it'll the needle just won't move at all, and I can share it and whatnot, but it and it just won't move, and that and that's part of their censorship. But what the Biden administration claims that they'll do 
is again to go back to the Obama era uh, net neutrality laws, which is just put net neutrality in place, which is just like undo what Ajit Pai did two years ago. Um, and even Tom Wheeler, who was the FCC's commissioner under Obama, who was very vehement about getting rid of um, net neutrality, was super into getting rid of net neutrality. Uh, eventually, because of the amount of pushback that people were throwing at him, like people were coming out of the woodwork. Websites were going dark um, because this guy wanted to get rid of net neutrality, right? And like, and and websites going dark means that people that follow these websites are going to get pissed that they can't access the thing that they normally access. And if they learn that it's because net neutrality is going away and that's like an important issue and so on and so forth, and, they, and then it gets people to learn about it, <laughs> Tom Wheeler basically was just like, oh, I don't want people to like get mad at me. And I don't know, like fucking take to the streets and like start a march or, you know, who knows, right? And he he got scared of, of like the, the power behind the people. Um, and he and he basically let net neutrality be what it is. It, it it continued to exist under the Obama administration. This is me saying, let's make an excuse for the Obama administration. I, I I think if you regularly watch my stuff, if you regularly watch your channel, I have a lot of problems with the uh, Obama administration. <clears throat> but Biden basically would would let a different chairperson be in charge of the FCC because. Uh, on a regular basis, and who knows? I mean, this is not really a regular basis sort of thing, right? Like the entire Trump administration hasn't been a regular basis kind of thing um, to a lot of respects. the The FCC chairman doesn't stay in power when they're when the pol their political party doesn't stay in power. You could make the argument that the Republicans are still in power because Joe Biden is a Republican, um, <laughs> but I don't think they see it that way. Uh, so. It's 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 very likely that this this douchebag is going to lose his job. Now, whoever comes in after that might might be good only in, in the term that they bring back net neutrality. But then again, they're not going to do anything about the censorship aspect of things, right? Like they're still going to go after anti-establishment creators. They're still going to, you know, put their fucking um they're they're gonna like deplatform people. I mean, last year alone, like we Twitter and Facebook had this. Um, they they had this coordinated effort to get rid of like eight hundred far left and far right independent journalist organizations. Like, just disappeared without a question. Like, how many of those are we gonna see? Especially because we know that that Democrats don't really like progressives. They get mad when the progressives criticize the party. Um, so, you know, it's it's very it's it's unnerving because I don't know if Biden and, and th look at the way that Biden was responding to when people brought up his. Uh, what is it? His record. Right. I got to drink more coffee. But look at the way that he would respond. He would get mad. He would get angry. So I don't know if I have full confidence that uh, with net neutrality back in place that content providers and and censorship is going to get better uh or be policed a, policed a little bit better under the biden administration i i highly doubt it i think you're going to see more lefty channels that criticize the democratic party uh either get throttled <clears throat> like what's happening to lee camp's page what's happening to graham elwood's page you know they get they get censored they get their channels get throttled um or they'll just completely get deplatformed period I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's that that is something that'll come around to. And, you know, the, and if they get caught, if it's like a big enough channel or, or people make enough noise, they'll be like, oh, man, what? It was a misunderstanding. Algorithms, robots. Am I right? Crazy. Uh, but there is a bigger picture here. Uh, the bigger picture is that American politics governed by capitalism fails to think in the long term for people. That's just. This is what it does, right? It, it, it doesn't think in the long term for people. If Obama really wanted to protect net neutrality, he would have put something in place that said that this is a staple of the internet 
And if you want the internet to function the way it, it function the way that it should be functioning, if you want the internet to exist at all, then net neutrality has to be preserved no matter what. Then you have somebody like Ashut Pai show up and he can't do dick all. He can't do anything about it. Right. But he didn't. He just he just kind of left it. And he was like, well, if somebody else wants to take it down, they can. But at least I didn't. And and now we're looking at an, an administration that has to come in and reverse what the previous administration did. And that's all American politics ends up becoming. You know, it's like, oh, the Democrat came in and they and they threw some breadcrumbs at the people. Right. But they didn't really protect uh, these rights these important things that need to exist, they didn't really protect them. They kind of just let them be. That's basically what they did. And then you have the Republican come in and then they look at the thing that's just there and they go, well, let's just get, get rid of it. Let's just knock it over. And then the Democrats come back and they go, well, we'll put it back up and then we'll let it go. So it becomes this back and forth, back and forth of one party will dismantle something and then the other party will just put it up. And then the other party. So it just becomes this, infinite cycle where we're just spinning our wheels that's not progress net neutrality is great but really where things need to go is what can we do beyond net neutrality right how can we make the internet a public utility well you have things like municipal broadband which has worked in various different cities of various different sizes so there's no excuse as to why this shouldn't be uh, this shouldn't be a thing most times um when you have municipal broadband, it's faster internet, it's cheaper internet, it's available to everybody. So if you're in the middle of the country, there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to download your porn or your Netflix as quickly as anybody in a big city. That's equal masturbatory rights for everybody. And that's what we need. That's what net neutrality is all about, people. How quickly can you spank it? That's what that's what this is all about. <laughs> that's why the internet was made. <laughs> no, but that's all we keep doing, right? We're just kind of spinning our wheels over and over again. And that's not progress. That's spinning our wheels. And if that's what American politics has become, then, you know, then I think it's time for some fundamental change. And that's where we're at. We're, we're at a point where fundamental change is absolutely necessary. Because we'll see with the Biden administration, all they're going to do is go back to the same shit <laughs> that we saw with the Obama administration that eventually led us back to the Trump administration. So who's so really for 2024, you, if you if you look at establishment politics the way that it is, it's the question should be, who is the billionaire that is going to pretend to be a populist in either party that's going to come in and take over after the neoliberal is done you know, being shitty to the working class. That's really the question. Um, so, uh, I also wanted to, I, I wanted to bring this up too, is, is it, let's also not forget why I think it'll stop at just bringing net neutrality back and just kind of being like, okay, hands off and let's just let it be what it is without putting any protections around it. Uh, even though now we have proof that somebody has, um, you know, somebody has threatened to to dismantle it and then had has dismantled it um the question biden it went and like had a dinner with a bunch of comcast executives that's the first thing he did when he got the nomination so you know the guy that's going to be the champion of the people is going to one of the worst corporations in america worst on every level by the way um their customer service is atrocious and i'm feel really bad because I definitely 100% uh, accidentally yelled at a Comcast person like years ago because they wouldn't set up my internet properly. I'm not my proudest moment. Uh, but that's, that's who Biden is, right? He goes and he talks to these executives and he talks to these corporations. So who's he really fighting for you know what's the back end deal here that net neutrality comes back but but what they get to charge whatever they want they get to they get to have tiers of internet anyway right like wh why can't people have the best and the fastest internet speeds regardless of who they are and where they're at so what happens to ajit pai that's the that's the next question i think we should be thinking about right 
uh, the article in Vice says that he might be looking at at, at bigger political uh, aspirations. So, you know, again, it's like Ajit Pai is not going to go away, just like Trump's not going away after 2020, as much as everybody would like him to 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 be gone. Let's be honest. He's a narcissist, so he's not going away. Um, and so is Ajit Pai, right? Ajit Pai is just like, look at the goofy shit that he did in order to fuck <laughs> in order to like in order to like make himself look cool he he's he is the perfect prep for a politician and he's a perfect prep for if you want a bunch of millennials to like get excited about the republican party right why would you not have someone like ajit pai he fits an identity model he's a brown indian dude He's smart. He thinks that he's funny. He's got dad jokes, he, you know, and, and he wants to dismantle things that help the people. He's the perfect Republican candidate. So he could be running for Senate. He could be running for the House of Representatives. Um, or he could be a 2024 presidential contender. If they want to play identity politics versus identity politics, let's say something happens to Joe Biden. Um, which is likely because I don't think Joe Biden is physically or mentally fit to take a high stress job like the president and and do it for four years. I just don't think that's um, that's like a thing that he's good at uh, or or that he's capable of doing. So Kamala Harris becomes president, and then when the elections come back around, why not run a, a brown person against a brown person? And, and then just battle it out with identity politics instead of real real policy and progressive change. I mean, it's a smart move <laughs> for, for, for Republicans to do, right? And, and as long as you have enough people that pay attention to the propaganda from corporate media, this will be fucking awesome. This'll, it'll be like the greatest shit show on earth. And not only that, but if data is, is more... Um, more of a commodity than oil is more expensive than oil. Uh, why not have the guy that has helped telecoms make more money? I, it's it's a no brainer. So as much as I, I mean, I am super fucking psyched that Ajipai is leaving, uh, and I hope that he does, and I hope that whoever comes in is. I don't know. They'll, it'll just be incrementalism for neoliberalism. That's that's really all it is. And and I, I'm I'm happy to have ne net neutrality back because I think it's needed. But I also think we need to put protections around it to make sure that other people can't dismantle it. Uh, but you know, I don't think it's the end of Ashit Pai. Uh, so which is good because it gives uh, my visceral hatred of this man to to be funneled into something. Right? It's like <laughs> it gets to go somewhere. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'm gonna look at look at some of your the the comments that you guys have been leaving. Uh, his name sounds delicious. His name does sound delicious, um, but it's it's mostly because of the pie aspect of it. I don't know what Ajit flavor is, um, but I, it it does it does sound kind of fun and and delicious. <laughs> uh, da, 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 let's see. Here we go. Having a lack of net neutrality on the internet would be like if the if electric companies would send uh, the full 120 volts to corporations and everybody else gets the limited 80 volts at unexpected times. Yeah, that's uh, that is a a uh, excellent description of of what it would be like if they if they were to do that. Um, best example is upload stream throttling. Uh, which Comcast does. They do. Uh, I have tried to, uh, when when I was at my girlfriend's studio, I would try to upload videos and they had Com she had Comcast over there and it definitely was way fucking slower on the uploads than the downloads. <laughs> so, um, oh man, you guys came up with a spank neutrality. <laughs> I like that. And Ned neutrality, but well done. Well done on the puns, everybody. Well done on the puns. <laughs> uh, I don't. Know, it's it's just a, it's a measure of energy, I believe. Volt a voltage. It's a measure of energy. Um, I think that's what it is. I might be wrong about that. Uh, I like you guys' puns. You got that. That was that was good additions. Good additions, you guys.
Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, and that way you'll get weekly uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.